It felt like a bubble. A bubble that just kept building and building and building and every just waiting for it to pop and the excitement is intensifying the entire game. Yesterday, we got to go to our first European foosball game, or as we know in the US, soccer game. And this was actually the first time that either of us have ever been to a soccer game. So that was pretty exciting. As spectators, I did play in one little league whenever I was in college or high school, I think. There was a team that was doing an indoor soccer league. They just needed an extra player. You had little league in college? You said little league. Yeah, it was a little league. Oh. Uh, excuse me. I just don't do that with the cup. As in, it was like small, few amount of teams. We were big. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I had never really played before. It did not go well, but this is our first time to actually go watch a soccer game. Yeah, I played when I was four, so don't remember much about soccer. But one thing that I was kind of nervous about going to the soccer game is all the things that I have seen online about European soccer matches. And it just seemed like it would be like really over the top. I've only ever seen videos of like the huge brawls that happened afterwards or like flares and all kinds of scary fights going on in the stadium. And for some reason, that's what I had in my head was like, basically what a soccer game was, was that environment. And so I was a little bit nervous, but I really wanted to go to a German and European soccer game and see it for myself. So luckily we had some friends that are from the area and they go to these games very often and they invited us to go with them. And I was kind of excited because they could maybe protect us from the wild things that I expected going to the soccer game. <laughs> Because of what we'd heard about European soccer, we were expecting it to be comparable to American football games because those can get a little wild sometimes. And the atmosphere of football games is just really loud and exciting and lots of cheering and really a lot of team spirit. So we were really comparing the atmosphere of American football to this European soccer game. We both went to universities in Texas and in the South, especially in Texas, American football is huge. At my university, whenever we would have our football games on Saturdays, every single week, we would easily have 90 to 100,000 spectators every single game. And this is university football. This isn't even professional American football, but it is massive. People would show up hours before the games and they would do what is called tailgating where they would all drive up in lots around the stadium and they would grill a whole bunch of food and play football a little bit, just hang out with friends and family, getting psyched for the game that was coming but the atmosphere was incredible before these games. And then also on the other side, as far as soccer goes, in our home state of Oklahoma, we just got our very first professional soccer team, but it's really, really small. They, they play basically in like an abandoned small high school stadium. I don't know a lot of people that actually go to it, but I have heard that the games are extremely fun for the people that do go to it. I just never made it out to one. And so I was really excited to see this because it seemed like it was gonna be just on a whole different level of impressiveness as far as soccer goes, but we also weren't very aware of the different leagues in Germany for soccer. We didn't know that there was the third league, second league, and first league, which are all professional soccer leagues, with the first league being like the top tier, top players, and then it goes down from there. The third league still being professional, still being really good players, but not being quite as a high level as the first league as far as we've had it explained to us. And we didn't realize going into the Kaiserslautern match that this was a third league game and they were gonna be playing against a team that was second to last in the third league. Our home team is FC Kaiserslautern, so that's who we were cheering for yesterday. Kaiserslautern is the biggest city in our area and their stadium there is huge. It's up on top of a hill, so walking up to it just looked like you're walking to a fortress. Yesterday was a really cold and rainy day, but there were still vendors all along the path getting up to the stadium. They were selling German foods like bratwurst, and then there were also vendors selling scarves that had the team logo on it, and they were red scarves. And so that was really interesting because we've never been to a, a sporting event where people wear the scarves and spin the scarves and things like that. So that was a new experience for us. There were also vendors right in front of the stadium and then as you walk in, they pat you down and you show your ticket and then you get in and it was just already buzzing. There were lots of people getting ready for the game and getting excited to go in. People's spirits were very high yesterday. And another thing that I thought was really cool is that at the concession stands, 
So like at a football game or any kind of sporting event in the US, the concession stands are gonna sell things like hot dogs, maybe hamburgers, nachos, popcorn, things like that. But here the concession stands were selling bratwurst and fricadella, fricadella and blue vine. blue vine and lots of beer and just very German feeling things. So that was really cool. So with that, we grabbed a couple of bratwursts and we grabbed our drinks and we went up to the stands where we were taking our seats and as we were coming in already, we could hear the singing from the crowds getting ready for the game to start. <laughs> Kaiser's Ladder has not lost a game, and I think what I saw was like 10 past games. That does not mean they've won the past 10 games, but our friend was telling us they are on what is known as a undefeated streak because they've had a lot of tied games, but they haven't actually lost any. So in American football games, there's lots of chants and cheering and yelling and people have these different hand motions for different things that happen in the games. But something that I thought was interesting here in the soccer game was there was a lot more singing than I've experienced in other American sport games. Um, they had just all kinds of songs that just seemed to go on for a really long time and everyone knew all of the words. They did also do lots of cheers and chants, but the singing was what really stuck out to me. There were flags at the front of the home side that they were waving like the entire time. Just the whole thing was very spirited and very exciting. It was really fun. It was hard to like not get excited yourself, even for someone like us that don't really know anything about soccer or aren't really interested necessarily in the sport before we went to this game. You like can't help but catch the bug and get really into the game just from the sheer excitement from the crowd that everybody had. Yeah, we sang along the whole time. No idea what we were saying. It was all in German, but we sang along. We were really excited. <laughs> Do you know what you're doing? I know exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> Another thing that I got excited about this game was the fact that where the crowd was sitting in the stadium was all covered from the cold rain. However, unfortunately, the players had to play in the rain, and so it was pouring on them the entire time, and they were slipping and sliding all over the field, which added a whole other fun element to the game, I think, because they couldn't actually keep their footing. But the stadium itself was actually pretty empty, except for our side. Our quarter of the stadium was completely packed, and the rest of it was, like I said, fairly empty. And then the opposing side, across, directly across from us, they had a tiny little corner where they had some crowd, but about 17,000 spectators came out to this game, which, I don't know, to me, for a third league against one of the worst teams on a weak night, on a cold, dark, rainy night, that's pretty good. I think it was really neat. Mm -hmm. But one thing that I can definitely say about this crowd was that even though the numbers might be relatively small, they were extremely loud too. Yes. I could not believe the noise that they were producing just from this one section of the stadium. <laughs> In some American sports, like American football and basketball, there are cheerleaders. There weren't any here at this game. I'm not sure if soccer has them in general, but here there were no cheerleaders. However, there was a guy up at the front, in front of the home section, who had a big megaphone and he was yelling out cheers and chants and songs for people to participate in. There was also a guy with a huge drum just drumming along to the beat and everybody was following along with their chants to that beat and that just added a lot of atmosphere and excitement to the game. Another difference that we noticed is in most American sporting events, there is some kind of like a halftime entertainment, halftime show, or they call people down to participate in games and things like that. There wasn't any kind of halftime entertainment. This was pretty much just a break for everyone to finally be able to sit down or go to the bathroom and get a drink or something like that. And again, American football and other sports like basketball are a lot bigger than soccer currently is in the United States. And so we're used to types of sports where scoring happens a lot more often. Where, you know, of course in basketball, they'll end up in like in the hundreds with their points and they're constantly getting baskets or in football where touchdowns are happening and you can end up with games like 49 to 14 and you have a lot of action happening like that. 
But soccer is definitely different than those types of sports. The entire time that we were watching this game, it felt like a bubble. A bubble that just kept building and building and building and everybody just waiting for it to pop and the excitement is intensifying the entire game and players kept getting closer and closer and shooting and shooting and one day and missing and missing the goalie kept getting it every single time and i kept pulling out my camera for every single corner kick and every single penalty kick and whenever guys would have breakaways and we thought this was going to be finally the moment and also, by the way, since it was raining, my camera, I didn't bring it in. I just used my iPhone, so the footage isn't super great. But the excitement was there, and it was so exciting. But then nothing ever happened. <laughs> this was another lesson for us that we had to learn in this game. Was that soccer games can end in ties and leave you with the most heartbroken, unsatisfied feeling after spending 90 minutes in the cold and in the rain we were covered, but not seeing anybody actually win was so disappointing. <laughs> I don't know of any American sports that end in ties. That's just something I didn't even know was a thing. So that was something that I learned as we were going through the game. I thought they were gonna have an overtime whenever it ended 0-0, but no overtime happened. I think I had even always heard of like these soccer shootouts that always ended the shootout. But clearly we don't know the rules. And so if you know the rules and you can explain why this game ends in a tie, leave those in the comments. But once again too, also, I am learning German. This is a complete side note, but leave those comments in German. Continue to help me practice my German because you guys have been so helpful in other videos. But yeah, leave that in the comments. Why do they end in ties? Why don't they have a clear winner and a clear loser to go in the stands? We know that each team ends up with like one point in the league standings after a tie but can't get over that fact though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Another thing that was very different for us was that after the game ended, people then went back to the concession stand to return their cups. So in the US, it's just a given that whenever you buy a drink at a game, you get to keep the cup. It's a souvenir cup. It usually has the team logo and all kinds of things about the sporting event on that cup. The cups here also did have the team logo and the event that we were at, but you can here in Germany take your cup back and receive money back. That was unique to us. This was all our first and only experience with soccer games, but it left us really wanting to go back to another one to be able to see if the things we experienced are just standard in games and that's the atmosphere and the vibe of soccer games, or if maybe this particular game was really unique and different. So we're excited to learn more and to become big foot foosball fans. <laughs> So definitely leave your suggestions down below of the teams that we should check out here. Of course, the first league we really want to go see. So leave all of your teams down there. Let us know what games we should be going and checking out, what stadiums might be interesting for us to go see. And let us know what we cannot miss as far as foosball goes in Germany. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please hit that like button. Also subscribe and make sure that you keep up with more of our adventures because we would love to have you traveling with us. Bye. We both went to... Okay, go on. Actually, that battery's about to die. From the top! Action. I just had a vision of like, remember um, in uh, uh, the Sandlot whenever Squints is like, lotion. 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 That's it. Donnie, when you're editing this, add that, cause that'd be hilarious. <laughs> Mellow harshed. <laughs> Star for the top. Ooh, spit it. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I thought it was gonna be shiny.